YouTube, this is Greg. Uh, last video we documented the replacement of the original uh, breaker box with a new Blue Sea Systems breaker. Way more reliable, uh, not corroded, really a very good addition to the to the boat. That was laying the foundation for being able to replace uh, a bunch of the other instruments on board. So we're really ri ripping out a lot of the old configurations and old wiring and one-off switches here and there to kind of consolidate all the uh, electrical through that breaker. So now that that's done, we're going to be replacing all of the instruments, uh, the navigation equipment. Uh, and so this video is going to document bringing all that gear, uh, or I should say uh, replacing all that gear and bringing all the new stuff to the helm to make it easier to single hand this boat. Okay, before we get started, I'll just show you what the helm looked like before we uh, started the retrofit. Um, so you can see this is the original helm in my Pearson 323-1980. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, it's got a, a compass, about a one inch in diameter, stainless steel helm guard, and a table. Uh, and uh, you can see here, we also have um, the boat speed, apparent wind and depth right in the cockpit there where it originally was placed when it was built. Kind of hard to see when people are sitting in the cockpit uh, from the helm. Uh, also, the they're all liquid crystal displays, which means they're really hard to read generally. Um, so uh, as you can see from this point of view from inside the cabin, this is where we've uh, filled those holes and glassed them over. Uh, and uh, so this is uh, sort of what we're replacing. Hey, Tube Ube. It's Greg my, on my girl. We are going to just quickly try to document our upgrade process here a little bit. So we, uh, we installed, this is the original helm, but you can see that the well, you might be able to see that the uh, helm guard is new. It's got it's one of these angled hel helm guards, and uh, we're gonna put we're gonna put a couple of uh, nav navipods on there, one for uh, GPS and one for uh, sailing instruments at the top here. So um, we took the old helm guard out, replaced the rubber feet with the stainless ones you see there, and we're gonna past the cabling for the helm guard, uh, excuse me, for the GPS and the sailing um, instruments through the, uh, the deck, through the, within the uh, helm guard itself, all the way up here. Uh, we're gonna do raynet for a future, we're gonna drop a raynet for a future, uh, uh, for a future uh, radar. And we're gonna um, just, we're not even going to connect it right now, but we're going to run it through there. And then we're going to run uh, uh, C-Talk NG. We removed all the other uh, navigation equipment and instruments aboard. So everything will be C-Talk and proprietary kind of Raymarine uh, communication. So what we're going to do now is we're going to basically place the Navipods here, mark them, drill the holes for them. And then uh, shortly after that, once we get them mounted, we'll be running all the cables through the bottom, which should be a lot of fun. So here we go. Okay, so here we're just placing the navipods to make sure that they fit and that they don't obstruct the view for navigating the boat. And uh, here are our new instruments, some of them. And here is the uh, Raymarine Axiom. All right, I double triple checked everything. I'm a little worried because they are recommending a 7 8 inch hole here. And these, uh, the stainless steel tube is only one inch in diameter. But, um, you know, I don't see any other option there. I, I could go a little bit smaller, but I don't know if I, if I go smaller, if I'll be able to fit um, the cables through. So I'm just going to mount it for now and then we'll uh, make a decision on which, because basically what we're doing is we're going to bring in three sets of cables. Power is going to come here only. Uh, then uh, the Raynet will go here. 
and then back here, and then the uh, seat, excuse me, seat talk will come here only, and Raynet will go here and then here. So, uh, all right, I'm gonna get the drill in. Kind of making me nervous a little bit. All right, I'm tapping these screws holes here. This one's done. However, I wasn't sure how deep to go because I wasn't, I didn't measure it before I started. So this time I put a little piece of tape there so I could measure the depth and make sure I, the tap doesn't hit the back side. Um, the back side of this uh, stainless steel pipe. Okay, so now we're uh, making the holes for all the cables. Really, really hard to drill through this stainless steel. I gotta tell you, this took me about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. All right, my handwriting is pretty atrocious, but this is the layout of the wiring of the uh, of the Navipod installation with the uh, helm guard. So basically we've got, this is the deck, right? And uh, this is the uh, tarp plotter. And this is the three instrument cluster above that. And so what we have is we've got the CTOC NG on the left side going straight up all the way to the very top and it taps into a five um, a splitter right this is the backbone it goes into the splitter and from there we the uh, splitter feeds the one i70s uh, an instrument and i70s so all these get power through ctalk right and then the backbone continues and goes down the cable down the uh, the helm guard into the chart plotter cavity where there's a, a terminator type connection that allows you to use the um, the end of the backbone as a connection, right? So that that's an extra adapter that plugs it into the tarp plotter. And then on the right side of that uh, helm guard, we have basically uh, four power wires, um, two positive, two negative. I guess I could have used uh, a single negative, but I didn't do that. So w two of these are for the power for the chart plotter. Two of them are for powering some other future accessory. Don't know what it would be. And then we also have a Raynet for the radar that's connected. And that is just kind of under the deck waiting to be connected to the radar once we get that. So that's basically how it's wired up. All right, well, mostly got uh, all of the cables run. So you can see this is a uh, kind of a double bend uh, helm guard. And on the right, this is from the, uh, the wheel side. And so on the right side, we've got two grounds and two positives. Yeah, I could have done one ground, but didn't think that far ahead, unfortunately. But I got two grounds, two positives. And I've got a CTALK connection down there. And CTOC's coming up on the right side out where the multifunction display will be. We've got uh, power for the MFB, MFD, as well as an accessory. Uh, I don't know what that will be, but it'll be available. And then um, you can see I cut the holes, real pain to do that, and then wrap them in, a, in uh, electrical tape to provide some chafe relief there. I also So on the left side, we've got CTALK coming to the top. We'll have three displays here, uh, along with a, uh, a three-way splitter. And one of those will come down um, here to this hole to feed the MFD for CTALK. So I think I've got all the wet wiring. We're really just missing a short CTALK kind of cable right here, um, which I'll have to, uh, I've already left a thread in place, so I'll have to pull a string in place to, to uh, install that. So I have to find one first, so there we go. All right, this is a post-production comment. At this point, I'm pretty excited about installing the home guard. Uh, did all the work for running the cables and drilling the holes at home, and now it's about time to mount it. So uh, this is uh, pretty exciting. I gotta tell you, I'm pretty stoked.
God is drilling a hole in the deck make me nervous. I mean, really, who wants to drill a hole in the deck? I mean, I don't. But here we go. All right, so this is also a post-production add-on. So we basically are feeding all the cables through the helm guard brace and then through the deck uh, and then lifting the helm guard into place and uh, pushing it all the way down. Part of this, which I won't capture on video, is uh, you know the helm guard base has um, feet that is... Uh, Maybe not exactly waterproof. It is waterproof around the base uh, at the deck, but uh, in so the water could e find its way in. So I have used some uh, marine sealant just as a uh, a failsafe in case water should find its way into the uh, into the helm guard itself, so that it doesn't make its way through, all the way through the deck. Okay, now that we've got the helm guard mounted, we are mounting the navipods, running the wires through them. Uh, from this point forward, this is all real elementary stuff. You know, you're connecting all the C-talk, the uh, uh, Raynet, the power, uh, all that stuff as described earlier in the diagram. And so I'm not going to go through all those steps here, but uh, we're real close to being done. So we finally got it all completed. Um, so we've got the, uh, as I said, we got all the cables coming in through here. Um, the Raynet is, or excuse me, SeaTalk is going up here where we've got a splitter. And then that splitter feeds these three for power and for data. And then uh, that cable then comes back down here into uh, the, for the Axioms. I mean, uh, SeaTalk. And then on the other side, we've got the uh, Raynet and power for both this device and then an accessory to be named later. And uh, so right now we've got depth, speed, uh, wind speed, autopilot. We've got uh, wind direction and speed, sea temperature, and assist boat, boat, boat uh, DC voltage. So that's about it. Thanks for tuning in.